Well, you should already know what this video is going to be about. Yep. Anyway, so, pulled the Husqvarna in. And uh, we're going to be doing the uh, plow mount on her tonight, I guess. It's uh, 717, kind of sort of busy day of doing a whole mess of other things. And holy, you'd think the mall this time around would be a little bit more subtle during the day. No, not at all. That's why I online shop. Forget going to the mall. I hate it. I only went for the ride. Little did I know I was going to be there for five and a half hours. Holy. Anyway, so uh, yeah, I'm going to be doing the uh, plow mount. Putting the plow up on the tractor here. Uh, if you don't know, this is my personal use tractor here. Won't be selling it anytime soon. It's pretty much the last year that they made the. Uh, the thicker steel on them. Uh, if you look at the newer style bodies, uh, the steel on them is pretty thick. Um, they don't really have the rounded over corners. The steel just comes straight down, and you know I just find them kind of cheap nowadays. And this one here is a really heavy duty tractor. It's got a lot of weight to it, even without you know the wheel weights. Um, if you're not if you're new to my channel and stuff like that, uh, you should know I bought this tractor late. Actually, I bought it early. I bought it early last summer, not the summer that just passed, but summer back in 2011. Uh, I bought this tractor for 400 bucks at a 24 horse. Yeah, I had a 24 horse uh, Briggs and Stratton V-twin engine in it. I uh, had some head valve problems and stuff. Um, so I pretty much sold the block to another YouTuber and a bunch of parts off this old and I had things sitting here for quite some time didn't know what I was going to do with it and then I was on eBay one night and well, I've been on eBay a lot looking for a new engine for it and I found this engine and I bought this engine on eBay for I think about six or seven hundred dollars brand new so this is a brand new engine it might not look it it's a little dirty I mean it's about a year and a half old but um it's done me good I love the sound of it and it's you know just can't beat it it's more reliable um, but unfortunately, I think come summertime, I gotta get her, get her, gotta get her uh, sent in, because I'm starting to notice a little bit of a uh, gasket seepage on the block. So, luckily, it's still under a two-year warranty there. So, that'd be pretty good. But anyway, love the tractor. Things a freaking monster, as you can see. I get 24s or 23s on there. Let's see, what are these? These are 22s. I apologize. 22s, they're the more narrow ones, and these things get some pretty kick-ass traction. Uh, I've upgraded the seat with the uh, armrests on them. A little bit nicer. Uh, what else have I upgraded on this? Oh yeah, the steering wheel upgraded on it. Uh, upgraded the wheel bearings in there. They used to have these little metal bushings in the wheels. I swapped those out for uh, ball bearings. Uh, what else did I do? I think that's mainly it. I've changed the belt on it, the drive belt. Uh, changed up the training fluid once on her. And that's about it. Oh yeah, and I put this uh, big ass friggin' hitch on the back here, as you can see. I used to use this for my old trailer that I used to have. I wouldn't, uh, wouldn't even attempt to put my new trailer on this thing, because I bet you a thousand dollars if I put my trailer on that hitch, that the friggin' back end or the front end of this thing is just gonna pop a big ass wheelie. <laughs> you know, it's not as if just the trailer dry alone is 3,200 pounds. Damn. But anyway, so that's what we got going on tonight. We're gonna do a little bit of work on this. I gotta run down later on tomorrow or something. I gotta get some oil for it. Wow. That just goes to show you how good of maintenance I keep up on this thing. Oil is friggin' pissed clean. And I've ran this tractor all summer without changing oil. Changed oil twice a year. Once at the very beginning of summer, not the beginning of spring, but the beginning of summer. And once just before winter starts, like what it's about to, and it is December. Uh, it's not the 14th, it's, I want to say maybe the 16th. I don't know. Today is December 18th. I apologize. So, we're going to be doing a little bit of that. i got to change out the tires. Uh, I have a set of the 20s on there with the tire chains. I'm going to stick those guys on there. Swap out the rims and stuff. Uh, I think next summer that comes, I'm going to get some new tires for. I want, uh, I want to get some AG tires all the way around. I want those in the front and in the rear. It should make it look pretty damn aggressive. 
I might get a bigger set for the front. I'm thinking about I have a really nice set of rims for the front. I think they're a little bigger than these. These are what? I don't even know. These are 15s. 1566. So the next ones up are pretty big and it'll give it a little bit of a lift. And if I upgrade the tire size, it'll give it a little bit of lift here and a little bit of lift in the rear, which will be pretty nice, in my opinion. But anyway, so uh, here's the plow we're going to be putting on. It's a fairly new plow. I got it two years ago. I did some trading. I traded an MTD snowblower for this plow. It was just a regular MTD two-stroke snowblower, similar to the one we just tuned up yesterday. And I bought, I pretty much traded him the snowblower for this plow, brand new in the box. So you can't beat it. It's got, you know, all the good stuff. And even got a custom decal made. I like them apples. Hell yeah. But I was watching a YouTuber the other day, I can't think of his freaking username. Uh, he had these ideas where he stuck these metal rods coming up through the uh, through the corners here. So little kind of sort of like plow markers. And man, I think I'm going to do that, buddy. I saw your idea. If you're, if you're uh, freaking watching this video, drop a comment below. I'll give you a shout out or something. That was a pretty genius idea. I never even thought about it. I had these... Uh, like, you know, those little orange little reflector things they see at the Home Depot, those little fiberglass ones, you stick them in there. Yeah, I had those on there a couple of years back on a different plow set, and they sucked. But I might do your idea there and take the uh, the bolt idea. That's a pretty good idea. Because it's, you just can't really see it too well when you're sitting in a seat, you know. So, hey, here's a little what's it's We'll uh, do that. And, oh, uh, yeah. So, uh,. I was telling you guys yesterday about the, uh, the whole freaking story at Best Buy. Well, I went to Best Buy this morning. Holy crap, what a deal. Walked in and walked right out. <laughs> so then I was like, all right, there's, there's no way of waiting in this line. There was literally a line, probably about 15 feet long, I'd say. There had to have been about 10 people in line, all waiting for phones. I was like, holy crap. So I went out this morning. I went and did that, and then I uh, did a few other things. I was like, all right, well, I'll drop off the two snowblowers I worked on. I worked on the errands yesterday, and that tour yesterday, I dropped those two off, and I went back down to Best Buy, and it was like 12 o'clock, well, probably maybe 1 o'clock. It was 1 o'clock by then, and I walked in, no one in line, and I sat right down, and I upgraded my phone. Woo! Freaking right some ruin. And my dad's with me, he's like, oh, maybe I'm going to upgrade. So sure enough, he's like a 16-year-old girl with an iPhone 4S. Yeah, you should have seen his old phone. I mean, it was old. We're talking like old school, dumb phone, slider phone type deal. Not even a full keyboard, just a regular number keyboard. But anyway, I'll show you guys the phone. Haven't broke it yet, which is surprising. It's just the iPhone 5 there. Nothing too spectacular. Um... You know, I like it. It's, you know, it's the same size as my other phone. But it's definitely a shitload lighter. That's what I've definitely noticed with this mode. You know, it seems to work fine. I haven't had any complaints. I got the black one, as you can see. It's just the uh, 16 gigabyte. I'm not really into throwing a bunch of friggin' songs on this guy. That's why I have an iPad for it. But, you know, it does the job pretty good. So, oh yeah, and the best part is it talks to me. I can make a talk stuff. I got it here. Find Pepper Cat Keith on YouTube. Let's see if it does that. If you like, I can search the web for Pepper Cat Keith. Searching the web for Pepper Cat Keith. I think that's pretty cool. It even text for you too, and I freaking hate typing. Hey, look at that. It found me on the YouTubes. What video is this? Oh yeah, I remember that one. Han, wet sand and buffed. I don't know who that one is. Keith Obama? Forget it. Go fuck yourself. Oh yeah, there's my YouTube account. Well, actually that's not a YouTube, that's a Twitter. Okay, this is not me on Twitter, guys, just to make sure of that. I, my Twitter is uh, Trackside Keith, I think it is. And at that, I only use it one time a year. <laughs> you know? But, 
Should we watch a video? Let's watch a video, so well the video qualities. Have yet to watch a video on here. Look at that, learn something new every day. Yeah, uh huh, shit, that's an old video. That's when we were doing the Han in the shop. That's when I was restoring it. But anyway, enough chit chat with that. Uh, we're going to mount this plow frame up pretty much. Here's the uh, antler that attaches to the unit. Uh, pretty much, once I get this on, I'll show you the mounting brackets and how it gets held up, and then we'll take it from there. So, it should be fun. Alright, I'm going to pull the hood off just to make it a little bit simpler. But, uh, yeah. So. Here's what I usually do. Um, these plow mounts pretty much basically will fit any tractor. Uh, pretty much to make my life easier is I pulled off the heat shield that was here. Usually that piece there goes here, you know, just to keep everything aligned from melting the plastic on the hood. Um, also, when I have, I have a big bumper that comes across here. It's just a dual little bar bumper. Uh, in the summertime, I would use that and I pull this piece off. Uh, this piece here goes right about here, so I'm going to reinstall it for the winter, just to cover it up. And I, uh, you know, I get a big open gap there, but once this is covered up, you won't see anything. Uh, when the bumper's there, I have to use the mounts that they give me there, so that's the reason why that's off. So I usually save this, put it right over there, which I just dug out, and I grabbed it. Uh, I got the two bolts in for the top here. Boom and boom. And uh, just to make it simple, I pulled off the two side bolts here. You know, just to make it simple so you can just slide it right on and over. Um, I did that. You can, I used to on the regular LT1000s, the DLT chassis, I used to use that hole right there. Um, but I don't think I'm going to use it. On, I don't remember me using it on, maybe I did use it last year, I'm not really sure. Yeah, I did use it last year, so I do have to put that bolt in. Uh, there's two bolts here. I couldn't figure out why there was two extra bolts here. This is just a... I was just in there holding down the bumper, but I have these two extra ones. Now I know what these are for two full. Um, these go right in there, actually. So I gotta go ahead and do that. I'm just trying to figure out if I did two last year or the three on each side. <coughs> I guess I did the uh, three. So once I do that, I'll leave everything off, and we should be pretty much good to go over there to put the cover on. So I'll go ahead and do that up real quick. All right. Got the last little nuts and bolts all uh, tightened up there, and man, I don't know what the hell happened with my damn thermostat over there. It had it cranked up to like 85. Guess what that thing went up to? <laughs> it went up to like 75, and I was like, what the hell? You know, I was getting pretty warm in here, and I like warm, but not that warm. <laughs> I was like, damn, where's the air conditioner? Oh, it's underneath that workbench there. But anyway, so... Uh, I got a lasso of laws and ends all buttoned up here, all the nuts and bolts basically, this is all mounted on now. Uh, one thing I want to point out is these crashing plows, they kind of sort of suck uh, when they start to become a lot of play in it. Uh, last, I think it was last winter, the winter before that, actually yeah, last winter, I had to pull my damn plow off and I had to replace uh, this whole bolt with a little roll pin in it because it got so much play in it where the plow was all the way up and it was just hit still hitting the ground so one thing you want to keep notice is I mean this I'm probably going to replace it again just this year I mean it's got a little bit of play in it as you can see but it's not that bad um, another thing I want to point out is uh, when I get this pin installed here not this one, the one that's behind me. Uh, you gotta make sure you put that washer on there because one year I didn't do it and uh, let me tell you it was a big mistake Always want to make sure that's as tight up as possible up and in here as you can possibly get it. So I'm going to go ahead, I'm going to pretty much stage by stage, I'll show you guys how to do it. Uh, I'll just keep the camera rolling. I'm not sure how, how the video is going to come out, but we'll give it a shot. As you can see, I get all the, you know, I got the little drag linkage here disconnected. This metal bar here that's going to slip underneath it disconnected. And a few other things here, so I'll show you guys. Move the jack out of the way. Fired right up the ZRT 800 today. Had it running for quite a bit. I went to go fire it up last night. Wouldn't fire up. I was like, what the hell's going on? And then I found out that my damn safety went. Okay, that'll work good just like that. So, 
I'm gonna get her up into place. Um, not actually this piece here has to get put in next, so I gotta slide this up and in first. This piece here, you see the little circle right there, is gonna go right up to where this little bracket is. This little slider, guys. So I'm gonna feed this guy through the other side if I can get her to. Come on. What the hell? Oh, that would make sense. There it is, right through the other side. Nothing too spectacular there. I wish I could find my damn camera mount thing. My stand. I know it's here somewhere. I found it a few weeks back and then I lost it again. Shop is like a freaking vortex. Well, anyway, I'm gonna get this in place. You guys can see if you guys can't watch. Maybe I'll sit you guys down yesterday. Sweet tea. I don't know how well this is going to work, guys, but we'll give it a shot. How's that? That a little better? Yeah, that's all there. So the goal is to get that little hole right there up and onto this guy. So I'll go ahead and lift up right here. Let's see. Without knocking over the sweet tea that's still got sweet tea in it. This is going to be great. Friggin' slid out on me. There it is. Alright. Get that. And rock it in place. Come on. So damn close. There it is. All in place. So there's that guy on there. Now I gotta come over to my wonderful bin of miscellaneous. Stuff. Mm, yeah, I guess we might be able to use that one. Oh, this one here looks a little better. Oop. Yeah, we'll use that one instead. So all you gotta do is eventually this pin's gonna look like a piece of mush after about four, maybe five uses. So what I sometimes like to do, if I can. I like to stick my finger in there and just try and, yeah, there's a little bit of a room in there so I could stick a wash in. Let me grab a really thing, a little bit too big for it, but it'll get the job done to where it will brace it a little better than what it would originally. Come on. Come on. Where's the hammer? Yeah, no, that slip ain't gonna work. I'll have to wait till the... Hey, wait a minute, what the hell? Hmm. What the heck's going on here? There it is. Took it a little bit. Hmm. Not liking that too, too much. I think we're going to go for the top hole. Oh, uh, yeah. Maybe that's what I did last year. I'm trying to remember. This was really a year ago when I did this. Okay. This piece here is going to go right through there, but i got to find a wash or something similar to this to go on the other side. That should be good. Alright, got a washer. I think what I'll do is I'll use this one on this side first. It's a little bit thinner, but it'll work. Lift up the plow just a little bit until you get her in the uh, spot where you want it. There it is. There, right, we'll look on the other side. Come on. So close! There it is. Okay. So, as you can see, it's on the other side here. Friggin' autofocus. 
anyway, that's on the inside. Dishwasher gets put on just like that. It gets tapped in a little further. And then the clip goes in. So I'm going to go ahead and do that. Pause the video, then we'll come back once it's all mounted up. Alright, so we got the plow all up now. Uh, pretty much what I remember what I did last year is I didn't use this pin. It must have been for my other plow. I must have used it on uh, PJ's tractor there. But I couldn't figure out. I'm like, damn, this thing's got so much play in it. I couldn't figure it out. And I was like, oh yeah, that's right. That's because on this one here, um, I've noticed with these craftsman plows, it could even be with other plows too. Um, after a while, these two fins right here, down the bottom here, they like to... Uh, They'll be like this close when you first get it, and then after a while it just starts to get wider and wider. And there's a lot of play in the plow itself, like in this whole bottom bracing. So I did this time, or what I did last time, just couldn't think of it what I did this time. Uh, as I just stuck a metal bolt pretty much going through it. It's not a hardened steel bolt. I mean, it should work fine. I think last year I might have used hardened steel, but we'll give it a shot this year and what we got. And, uh, you know, it just holds it up a little better. Uh, I mean, there's no more play really into it, so it's not too, too bad. Um, you know, so that's pretty much it. I got the handlebar all installed there. Uh, one quick thing, though, when you're doing it is if you get lucky, uh, you might be able to slide this black handlebar piece over it, like what I usually do. But if you don't get lucky, you got to, before you put this metal piece on, put the black piece on, then the metal piece, and then put your plow piece on. It'll just save you a little bit of aggravation. I kind of said, forgot to point that out. But mine is the angle plow. You just crimp this down. You push in that way to turn it. Or you pull back to turn it the other way. Oh, there goes my sweet tea. Woo! Caught it just in time. There we go. But, I mean, either way, it can tilt the turn the other way. I mean, I think it's like a 40 degree angle, 45 degree angle. Yeah, probably about a 45. But that's how it looks with the angle. But, I mean, I wouldn't... Uh, if you guys who's going to put this on a tractor, I would not suggest putting it on uh, a hydro gear transmission. Uh, the, re the way how you can check to see if yours is a hydro gear transmission is either A, you can look underneath your tractor. You look right underneath here and it'll say it on the back. See uh, right where that little white little tag is? You'll leave the say it on that. Or if you lift up your seat, and you find a little tag that says something like this over here. Hydro gear. I wouldn't suggest putting it on. Let me just clean this up a little better. It says hydro gear. Hydro gear. And uh, I would not suggest putting a plow onto a hydro gear transmission. Uh, reason being is you will probably blow out your transmission after about maybe, I don't know, maybe a good solid year of use. I found that out the hard way. Uh, I think it was like three years ago. It had a Grasser LT1000, had a regular hydrostack transmission on it. Blew it out after two years of plowing with it or a year of plowing with it. And uh, the transmission that was in it was a replacement transmission. That tractor was pretty much brand new when I got it. And I beat the ever loving shit out of it. Uh, same with, uh, it's either going to be on like a Crossman LT1000 or a uh, Crossman DLT. I had him a DLT 3000. And that thing was hurting by the time I sold it, <laughs> you know. But, I mean, if you have a six-speed transmission, go for it. Those things are the best for plowing. Uh, I have a turf tough or tough torque transmission in this thing. And uh thing freaking, you can see up here underneath my seat, says a tough torque. That's what it's called. And uh, you can find them in, you know, mine's a Husqvarna. You can find it in autofocus. Holy crap. Um... You can find it in like a John Deere transmission. John Deere's will have the tough torques in them, a turf tuck, whatever the fuck you want to call them. Um, MTDs, don't plow with them. Don't even stick a snowblower on them, don't even stick a plow on them. If you want your MTD to last maybe three, four years, even if you do buy it, I wouldn't put a plow, wouldn't plow anything on it. Snowblower, plow, anything. Leave it be, mow your lawn with it. Those things are a piece of tin. That's all it is to it. Um, trying to think what else might have the turf tuck, tough turf, blah, 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 blah in it. It's John Deere, John Deere Sabre, uh, Scott's, Husqvarna. Maybe the newer 
craftsmen, the D, the, the big, big black ones, maybe those might have it. I'm not 100% sure. Um, but yeah, these transmissions, they like it. They like being used. The other ones, after a while, they start hearing whining noise going, and it's just will literally blow it right out the back. <coughs> so, wouldn't put one on a craftsman with the hydro ear. But anyway, tomorrow night's uh, or tomorrow's video is going to be, I think, uh, maybe changing out these tires, uh, getting the electrical up on working on this thing. I have these two uh, side marker things on either side. I think they're blue or red, not 100% sure. And uh, they're just marker lights, that way people know that I'm plowing on the sidewalk. I got a little bit of box I got to hook up here. And uh, I got my air pump up here for my air horns. I got to hook that up again just to piss people off. But other than that, I mean, it's ready to be used. I'm going to change the oil on tomorrow. I know it doesn't need to really be changed, but I'm going to change it anyway. Change the filter. I like to keep my maintenance on my engines clean, especially when you spend a certain amount of money on it and uh, you don't want it to blow up. Uh, let's see what else. So we get tires tomorrow, oil tomorrow, hook up the electrical, and oh yeah, I gotta put the wheel weights on those too. I got the wheel weights I gotta put on. Oh yeah, we're gonna fluid film the tractor tomorrow. Yep, that's what I do every year. I fluid film all my uh, tractors. As crazy as it may sound, but you know, friggin' I'm a fanatic with this one. Especially when I paid so much for it and put that kind of an engine in. I want this one to last. Don't plan on selling it anytime soon. So, anyway, hope you guys enjoyed the video and I uh, gave you a little bit about the freaking crap plow here. So, yeah. Anyway, we'll talk to you guys all tomorrow. Until then, don't run yourself over with your lawn tractor. Oh, yeah, it's happened once before in the past. Oh, yeah. <laughs>